actually, I think everyone should know uh, via the email that you can go to the website, look at your exam, look at the exam questions, exam solutions, and your, your grade. And I'll leave it to you to, to check, uh, find out where you went wrong, um, especially check that I've added up the marks correctly. Uh, sometimes my marking at least is not very neat on there. You see a quick tick or a cross. But on the front page you should see your uh, scores for individual questions. Make sure it's added up to the total correctly. And make sure the total on the front of your exam is the same one that's on the website. Because it's in fact the one on the website that eventually will impact on your final score. So I, I need to transfer from the paper exam to the website. Make sure I haven't made a mistake. I try to check, but you can double check. Uh, I'll say a little bit more about the statistics of the exam in a moment. I have some slides. Any questions? Anyone have any specific questions or, or issues with the midterm exam? Everyone happy with their score? I know some people will be. Uh, others may not be. We'll see some statistics and you, you in fact, even from Moodle, if you follow this link, you'll see your score and uh, I don't have it here, but if you select your grades, you can see your rank for your exam, where you rank in the entire class in both sections. So you can see uh, how you went compared to others. We'll come back to the assignment towards the end. Uh, the other thing What else about the exam? The other thing was the course. Course feed, uh, the f feedback that you gave online just before the exam. So let's quickly go through that. Uh, so there was a set of questions about the online quiz, mainly about the quiz, the difficulty, and and how it works for you. So. Uh, if you haven't seen the results, let's quickly go through them. There were, of the entire class, about half of the people responded. Um, the first one was, how can we improve the lectures? And in fact, there were two, two questions. And most people said more example questions here, uh, more example questions, more in-class exercises. So, uh, well, let's at least over the remainder of the semester try and I'll try and give a few more examples in the class. Um, we'll talk about those examples shortly. Um, remember the examples that I go through uh, I may go through on the board or on the screen. Uh, sometimes I'll go through and there's actually printed notes on the website that you can download. Uh, and that reminds me, the new set of lecture notes are available in the Copy Centre. We're starting a new topic from tomorrow morning. So we'll try and give a few more examples throughout the lectures. Uh, how were you going so far? Or what did you expect to get in the midterm exam? So what half of the students said 60 to 80% Okay, that was your own judgment. What were the actual scores? 3% got between 80 and between 80 and 100. Between 60 and 80, maybe 16%. So people didn't go as well as they expected, at least, which is not unusual. Maybe it's, maybe this wasn't what you expected, but what you hoped for, for some students. Um, so it's a shift down a little bit, but I hope uh, all, your, all of the students can shift that up for the midterm and get closer to what we see here. Okay, this is not very accurate, less than 50%. Um, the time of the quiz, okay, most people said usually it's about 10 minutes for the quiz, some have been longer, most, or well, either too slightly short or okay. And the quizzes are supposed to be put you under a little bit of pressure. So they need to have some time limit. 
Otherwise, you'll just sit there, call your friends, go through the textbook, and, and you will not learn anything. So there will be a time limit, but I'll probably extend it a little bit on each quiz to maybe add an extra few or five minutes as opposed to what I did it before the midterm. Uh, just make them a, a bit longer. Sometimes uh, it's hard to me to judge how long it will take you to do each, each question. So I'll try and add a few more minutes to each quiz. Uh, how many attempts do you want? Currently we have three. Some people want more. Some wanted unlimited attempts. Uh, I don't think that will help many people learn, having unlimited attempts. Let's maybe go for four attempts. I know some people had trouble with uh, internet access, um, getting the units correct or the notation that the software accepts correct. So I don't think four attempts will be uh, much different from three attempts, but uh, if it gives you a chance to try one more time, then that may be okay. So let's keep it similar to before. Uh, we had five quizzes, I think, before the midterm. Around five. I think we'll have the same again after, at least five after the midterm. We also have an assignment. Uh, rate the difficulty of the quiz. Okay, most people said okay. Well, okay in that they are difficult, but you may be able to answer most of the questions. I don't want them to, to be too easy. I don't want them such that no one can, can answer any questions too hard. Uh, so that's not too bad. In fact, they will continue to be a range of difficulties. There'll try to be a few easy ones, but most of them will try and push the majority of the students. That is, I don't expect everyone to get 100% in those quizzes. There will be some hard ones. We'll come back to that uh, when we see a few other comments. How do people take the quiz? Okay, study on their own, fine study with other students, then take the quiz on their own, good. Uh, the only suggestion I can make there is if you're working with other students, at least do the first attempt on your own. You have four attempts now. Do the first one without talking to your friends, without even asking them what's in the quiz. So study, do the first attempt, and then you can see the answers, and then you can uh, maybe talk with your friends and see, well, how do I solve this problem? What's my approach here? Or even talk to me if you have questions. So at least do the first attempt on your own. Uh, and a bit, the other questions are about the website. How useful is the course website? Right, useful for the, the lecture notes and maybe, I think most of you, the past exams. It's not easy to find them because the websites are uh, everywhere, but if you follow the links, eventually you'll find exams from previous years, even quizzes from pre previous years, in some cases. Uh, if you haven't noticed, most of the examples, at least the ones I draw on the screen, I will post the images on the website. So if you cannot follow and copying here, you can go and look at my notes there after the lecture. And some are even typed up. So the examples that we go through are also on the website. Videos, okay, some people have seen them, some don't care, that's fine. Those that have seen them or are interested in this topic, there are some, from the same YouTube site, you can see some other videos related to this course, but not things that we'll cover in detail about Linux command line, wireless LANs, how to uh, intercept wireless LAN packets, security of Wi-Fi. Have a look at them if you're interested in, in uh, computer networking and wireless LANs especially. You see your IT students, so next semester, most of you, what do we have? IT security, ITS 335. I'll teach you IT security next semester and we'll definitely use Linux command line and see aspects of network security. And of course, you gave, had a chance to fill in some, your own written feedback. I've just grabbed a few of them because many people provided similar trends in their comments uh, and I tried to collect them. So one was about the examples that I go through in class, 
versus what you get in the online quiz. And uh, this is just four of the ones I selected. There were more, but the trend was that people were saying that the examples in the class are easy, the quiz questions are hard. Okay? Uh, so that's what some of the people said. Um, true, that is true. The, the examples, so the quiz questions are different from what we go through in the class and what are in the lecture notes. Uh, that's intended. Um, I will try, as I said before, add a few more examples in the class which should be similar to the quiz questions now after the semester, after the midterm. Um, but yes, that's, that's true. The, the examples, you need to be able to not just follow a, a template to solve a problem. Many students expect to receive a, a template. Here's an example, and if they can follow that exact set of, se set of steps, they'll be able to answer a quiz question, answer an exam question. You need to be able to uh, understand what's happening in the examples and then apply that knowledge to solve other problems. It's always the same uh, techniques and concepts that are being tested, but as you see in the quizzes, they are different types of questions, worded differently, set up differently, and I would like you to get exposure to those questions so you can improve your problem solving. So just a reminder, the purpose of those quizzes the online ones are in, to encourage you to study on a regular basis every week to do some study. Of course, evaluate your own progress so you know how you're going and practice for the exam. So, yes, the quizzes will continue to be hard and different. Some people think online quiz, 10 minutes, I just sit there for 10 minutes, answer the questions and easy. No. Just because it's an online quiz, it's a quiz, doesn't mean it's like a quiz in the lecture that you have some other courses, that you just take 10 minutes and done. Uh, you should study before the quiz and between attempts. Okay? So here's a, a guess by me. A 10-minute quiz may require maybe two hours of study. It doesn't require 10 minutes of just sitting there and then you're done. You need to study, take the quiz for 10 minutes, study the answers, try again if you weren't successful in the first time. So don't think that just because it's a 10 minute quiz it's only going to take you 10 minutes of your time. You need to study a bit more. Treat it as an assignment, a mini assignment, some homework where you need to do some extra study. And just a summary from before, let's have four attempts, maybe a, a bit more time for each quiz, and we'll try a few more examples in the class. So many comments from students about that issue. Uh, the other one was about the using the Moodle software, the online quiz itself, and how it's hard to use. For example, how many decimal places do I give in the answer? How do I type the units? Is it M, meter, uppercase M, lowercase M, and so on? What if I have trouble with the internet, my quiz, I lose my quiz attempt? Uh, the interface of getting some feedback. So there are a number of comments from students about, not so much about the difficulty of the quiz, but using the software to uh, take the quiz, which is true. I think there are some issues there. Um, I think the practical advice I can give you is first, don't worry too much about the accuracy in numbers, number of decimal places. Most questions are set up, if you have to give a, a, a number as an answer, that there's some tolerance, plus or minus 2% or something. So whether it's 21.3 or 21.30567, it will be marked correct in either case. Okay? And if it's not, and you think it's close enough, or if it's you give an answer of 21 and the answer was 21.3 and it's marked incorrect, then you should just let me know and I, in most circumstances I would mark that answer correct. Okay? Spelling, again, uh, of course you need the right units, but sometimes the questions are set up such that only one 
specific answer is accepted and marked correct. But there may be other valid answers. And over time, I'm adding those valid answers. But until I add them all, uh, the software will automatically mark you wrong if you don't give a valid answer. In which case, you should just notify me, and I will manually mark your quiz and change your mark from incorrect to correct. Okay. That's a limitation of this online automatic checking. That uh, it's not feasible to to automatically correct all possible answers. So let me know if you want your quiz marked manually. That's quite easy to do. And, okay, if there's some bad user interface or if, since we're doing an online quiz, then try and work around the fact that, yes, you need internet access. If you're trying on your mobile phone to do the quiz and it's an unstable connection, then maybe you should come and try here on campus one day and do the quiz here. If you can't, cannot get an internet connection that lasts for 10 minutes, then try and do it here during a lunch break, for example. But the main thing, let me know if you want something marked manually there. That's easy. All right, this was one comment, and probably others would have the same feeling that some of the mathematics is... I don't, don't, won't say too hard, but things that you don't remember, uh, like this comment. It's something that I for forgot about in high school. I should teach a bit of mathematics at the start. Uh, well, my answer is no. Um, I think all of you are third year ITCS students, uh, or, or similar. You've taken several mathematics courses already in university not high school, primary school, but university, mathematics, so here are some of them. So you're capable in mathematics. The mathematics that we use in this course usually are these operators. Addition, <laughs> subtraction, multiplication, division, raising something to a power, exponentiation, and logarithms. These are not, not university mathematics. They are high school mathematics maybe even primary school mathematics in some cases. So you need to refresh your memory. I, I'm not going to help you with these basic operations. Okay? So if you cannot remember logarithms, then go on Wikipedia, go somewhere, find some resource just to refresh your memory, even take the online practice to, to get up to speed so that the examples that we go through are much easier for you to follow. This is a comment, sometimes feels bored and feels sleepy in class. So do I in some cases uh, when <laughs> students are sleeping. In fact, the IT section is much better than the CS section. Uh, I don't know why, um, but I find in the CS section, especially Wednesday mornings before we have our lecture, most of them are falling asleep in the first 10 minutes. Uh, what can we do? I can try and improve my, my lectures, make more fun and so on. Uh, but it, you can also try and participate. If you're falling asleep or you're not following, try and do something to, to wake up, maybe ask a question. Okay? Uh, try and do something to avoid the boredom, the sleepiness during the lecture. And I'll try and do something as well. So some of the comments from uh, the feedback. If you did the feedback, you can see all of those online. Any questions or any suggestions about the online quizzes? Okay, you have a chance to influence how they are set up for the last five or six quizzes up until the final exam. Any preferences or things you would like with the online quiz? That uh, easy? It's mixed. It's mixed. Okay, I'll try and continue that. There should be some easier ones, which most people can do, and some hard ones, which take a lot of study. Yeah, that's the idea. Um, any problems? How was your exam? Not so good. Why? 
Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, no. Did you find the past exams, exams from past years? Last year's exam was easier than this one. Possibly, yes. Uh, last year's exam may have been easier than this one, but uh, of course that's easy to say when you've seen the exam before sitting it. Um, but sometimes there's some variations, yes. Um, I try to take that into account when working out the final grade. I'll talk about it in a moment. Uh, yeah, let's talk about the midterm exam. Not go through the exam, but uh, just look at some statistics. And then we'll be done today. Okay, scores <laughs> ranged out of 100 from about 10 up to almost full marks, 97.5. So two people got above 80. And that's no, very good scores for that exam. And you're right that from memory, and I can't remember the exact values, but from last year, that there were more students getting at least higher scores in this range. I can't remember if the, the, the average was different, but there was a higher number of students getting 80, 85, 90, 95 last year. So yeah, probably it was harder than last year. Uh, I hope, I want the, this to shift you know, to two positions this way at least, so that you know, these two are here. Uh, and these move here by the end of the semester, so with a final exam included as well. If you, of course, if you got above 80, excellent. If you uh, got above 50, okay, you're, you're going quite well. You're understanding most of the things. You probably made some, you may have made some simple mistakes that you could have improved. Uh, your score with, um, so keep going. If you got a b below 50, then you want to try and improve uh, a fair bit for the final exam. If you got in this 20 or 30 area here, then you need to work hard okay, to get a good grade at the end of the semester. And if you don't know how to do that, then talk to me about different ways or strategies to try and improve this grade. So the last thing is, okay, because people want to know how well they're going and how, what grade they're going to get, uh, how is your grade determined at the end of the semester? Uh, you get a score out of 100, which is worth, which is calculated from the quizzes, the one assignment, most people should be able to get 15% or very close for the quizzes. Okay? There's no reason why you cannot get 15% or 13% if you've missed a couple of quizzes even. And the assignment, if you work hard, it's a group assignment. Uh, most people get good scores above 10 from past years. Midterm exam, you know what you've got. Final exam is the main thing uh, worth 40%. So you need to go better in your final exam if you want to improve your grade. So I'll sum up those, give you a total score, and then I'll determine cutoffs between the grades uh, based on different factors. For example, the, the distribution of the scores, the, the ranking and so on. How I compare the assessment items from this year to previous years. For example, the midterm was harder. Therefore, I may expect the cutoff to be slightly lower, but we'll see about the final exam. Of course, we ne need to meet the SIT grading regulations. No more than 20% A's, no more than 20% F's. Won't be a problem. This is, I looked briefly at the cutoffs that I'd used in previous years. Okay? Each year varies, of course. What this means is, for example, in the previous, I don't know, it was three or four years, the cutoff to get an A ranged from 78 to 83. So in one year it was 78. If you got above 78%, you got an A. 
In another year, it was 83, above 83, and it ranged between those values. So, and then similar for the other grades. Uh, maybe look at this, this column, the first column. What that means is, in previous years, if someone got above a 46, but below 55, they got a C plus in one case. Uh, below a D is an F. Okay. Um, now, of course, this is previous years. This year may be different. But you, you can expect it similar in the range. You can expect it somewhere near these numbers, the cutoffs. Uh, may not be the, the same, it may be higher or lower, but you expect it's in these ranges, or near these ranges. And I think for most of you, not a problem. Uh, but for some other students, usually in the previous years, about three students received an F, or they withdrew at the right time. But I don't want anyone here to get an F. Not my desire. Any questions about the grading? So there's no, I cannot give you a formula for determining what you're predicting your grade, but you can determine your, sorry, your, or you can predict maybe your quiz score, you know your midterm score. Before we do the final exam, you'll know your assignment score and you can predict what you need, for example, in your final exam to get uh, a, a total score, and approximately use these ranges to give an indication of what grade you may be looking at. Okay. Whether you're on track for a D or an A. Any questions? The last thing I just want to look at is the assignment, very briefly, but not, not long. So any questions on the exam or quizzes? OK. Good. Uh, the assignment. Instructions are on the website. You have a look at them, read them. Let's just, uh, that was the midterm. Let's have a look briefly about the structure of the assignment. Some of the details we'll describe over the subsequent lectures. So, it has several tasks, three tasks. So, you'll see one of them involves doing some experiments with audio recordings. Very simple. Get your computer, record some audio for one minute, and save it using different codecs. And then do some analysis comparing the, the different codecs. How big the file sizes are, how much compression is used, maybe even what quality each one saves the audio as. So there's more description down below, but in fact, it's something you can start straight away. Once you have your group, you can easily get your laptop, record through your microphone for a minute some audio, and save it as a WAV file, and then try and save it using different codecs, MP3, FLAC, any uh, codec that you choose, and do some comparison between them. Then there are two tasks about using wireless LANs, wireless local area networks. IEEE 802.11 wireless LAN. So, for example, laptop to access point, we're using wireless LAN as the technology. For these tasks, you need to again do some experiments. So, in your group, you'll need some computers with wireless LAN capabilities, say a laptop, uh, maybe a, a mobile phone in some cases. And you'll need to connect direct between devices. For example, between two laptops to transfer a file. We will not use access points because you may not have access to an access point. So I'll ask you in a group to, say, have two laptops and transfer a file.
file wirelessly direct from one laptop to another. So first thing, we'll work out how to do that. It depends upon the operating system. Okay, so different operating systems have different software to do that setup. If you don't have access to laptops that can do this, in the th third floor of this building, there's the Apple Mac IT lab. And there's, what, 30 or 40 new iMacs in there, and all of them have Wi-Fi. Okay? Even though they're, they're desktop computers, they have Wi-Fi, so you can use them to do the tasks for the assignment if you need to. If you really want, I have some wireless adapters that you, you can borrow. We will talk more about those wireless LAN tasks maybe tomorrow and possibly next week and give you more hints of how to get started. But at least you can get started on task one, which is the audio recording. Uh, OK. I don't want to go through the tasks in detail here. I want you to read the instructions. It gives a brief description of what I ask you to do for each of those tasks. And you need to submit a report at the end. And I give here just a, an example of what you need to submit or what you'll produce. For example, in this task, you'll record some audio. What's the output? Some audio files. Okay, I may ask you to submit them. Task A3, you compare some codecs. What's the output? What do you submit to me? You submit a report, maybe including a table that compares the codecs, maybe a few paragraphs of text explaining their advantages and disadvantages. So some hints as what I expect in terms of the submission there. And that applies for... 2.2 and 2.3, the wireless LAN tasks. Group assignment. So form a group of three, and tomorrow I'll bring a piece of paper where you can mark your names listed on, and you can mark your groups of three there. So you need to do it before next Monday, but earlier the better to form a group. Uh, I think we have enough students, so we'll, well, I think we'll have almost all groups of three. There may be one student left over or a group of two left over, we'll see. But try and form a group of three. You can mix between CS and IT, that's fine. Everyone needs to participate in this assignment. There's all, all three students. And I think the rest you can read. And at the end you submit a report. I may ask you to upload some files, but the main thing will be a report, several pages long, reporting on each of those tasks. Um, currently due on the 16th of September, so about a month, about four weeks to do that. So, your task for this week, form a group, read the instructions, and probably you should be able to get started on the audio uh, experiments and then you'll be ahead and then you'll be able to move on to the wireless LAN experiments in the subsequent weeks. I'll leave it to you to read through that. I'll not go through it here. Uh, once you've read it, you can ask more detailed questions. That's all I want to cover today. Any questions or comments? There's so few of us here, I can ask individuals if there's any questions or comments. Any problems? No? Around the class? Shake your head? Yes? No problems? No problems? Everything okay? What grade did you get? Uh, what score in the exam? Did you get what you expected? 77 is good. Okay, that's, that's very good uh, for a hard exam. Uh, you should aim to get uh, 95 or 100 in the final though. Everything okay? Any problems? What about this batch of four people? Any problems? Just improve your exam score, okay? No problems? Exam okay? All right. <laughs> Enough for today. Uh, let's start the new topic tomorrow. 
And there's a new handout, I think. Is that correct? Yes. There's a new set of handouts in the copy center if you don't have them. We're going to start from here tomorrow, OK, tomorrow morning. We'll see you then. Thanks for coming for this last lecture today. <laughs>